cringed at that word. <laughs> it used to be a scary word for me because I didn't think it was okay to have needs. But also, I didn't know I thought that way. It was a subconscious core belief. So when I got married, we ran into a lot of problems because I was sure that Ruslan should know all of my needs and meet all of them without me having to let him know what they are. Duh. Yeah, that didn't work so well for me. I started feeling like my needs weren't being met in certain areas, but then I didn't know how to express them. And when something would come up, I would just feel so disappointed or frustrated or irritated because he didn't do what I thought he should in a certain situation or he didn't express what I really needed to hear or I wasn't, there was a certain part of my love tank that wasn't being filled. And I thought for sure it was his problem. It's way easier to fix his problem than look inside. That's no fun. <laughs> So God just started showing me that I had an issue with being okay with the reality that I even have needs. And the even bigger scary part was that only this guy, my new husband, could fulfill those specific needs. So freaky, I need to not only let him know what I need, but he's the only one that can fill those needs in a marriage. That's scary. That's the rubber hits the road. Oh dear, we're like putting it all on the line in this marriage. If we want this marriage to work, we have to fully engage the heart, fully show up, and fully be honest with ourselves, be vulnerable, and express those needs. It's not easy. I just had this happy interruption. You want to say hi? Hi. This is life as a mama doing what God calls us to do. Yeah. You're my favorite Liam in the world. <laughs> so some of my obstacles to expressing my needs were vulnerability, showing weakness, having needs. And so when I would get my feelings hurt or be bummed that something didn't go according to what I really hoped and I didn't express, I would literally almost feel frozen to express that. Like first I was feeling shame that I had a need and that it wasn't met and that I could feel something so strongly and then I felt embarrassed that such a small thing meant so much to me. And then I didn't want to be so vulnerable to Ruslan that then he could maybe use it against me later. You know, I didn't know his heart fully yet. We we're still in the new phases of marriage. But I had to trust him with my heart. And that doesn't just, boom, happen so easily. And for some of us, it's a lot harder. And then I had triggers that from things that were from trauma from the past that marriage brings up all the triggers that you have hiding in there. You can't hide from any of them. They will all be exposed. <laughs> I didn't know about triggers when I first got married. All I knew was this man is not doing everything right. <laughs> Neither was I. But I was shocked at some of my triggers because I had such an explosive reaction to certain things. And I just had no control over that. When the trigger came, it came and it came hard. And I would really be upset. And Ruslan had triggers too, but we're not talking about that side right now because I just wanted to address this whole needs area. One of those triggers was that I found out Ruslan really loved to game. We got a computer and he did not know this about himself either because when he was growing up, he didn't have computers. 
So he was excited about this new discovery and he would be staying up till two, three in the morning and then leaving for work at 9 a.m. And we would barely get any time together when he got home from work. And quality time is one of my big deal things in marriage. But I didn't know how to ask for that gently or without nagging. I was so mad that he would not no, that's obvious that his wife would want to spend time with him. So then I was building up in bitterness and offense. And then he would come to bed after gaming and I would just be seething. And then, I'm sorry, I respond. I'm not trying to be mean to you, but this was one of the areas that brought my triggers out. Um... He would not even touch me or roll towards me or like kiss me on the forehead or anything. He would actually just lay down on his back and go right to sleep. And that was just like a thousand times worse because what that said to me was he doesn't even care. He doesn't even want to spend time with me. Oh my gosh. And, you know, looking back to... He didn't do it every night, but we had no protocol for it. We hadn't come to any agreement on how much he could or couldn't do. And then the only time it would come up is when he would do it so much. And then I would be mad and then we would fight instead of being able to just talk about it in a peaceful way. I had already the bitterness and hurt built up. And years later, it's funny, you probably already figured that out. But when he would come to bed and wouldn't touch me or hug me or cuddle towards me, it was because he didn't want to wake me up, but little did he know I was wide awake at that point, waiting for him to get to bed. So I know, silly, I could have just gone out and been like, hey, honey, could you come to bed now? Well, no, because I was too hurt and I was believing that eventually he would see how much it's hurting me and would change his habits. Not... So that's something that has been <laughs> a really big thing in me learning that I can use my voice. I can voice my needs. I'm not trapped and no way out and no way to break through this cycle because that's what it would feel like. It's like, I have no options here. He's not listening. He's not changing. We just fight when we talk about it. There's no hope. I feel powerless. I felt powerless. But only in hindsight do I see that I did not know how to express it in a way that he could actually gently talk about it with me because I was already triggered every time we tried to talk about it. So it was rough and we did not have anyone to speak into our lives at that point. So we were just winging it alone, which is what I highly do not recommend for marriage. You need healthy couples who have gone before you or counseling just occasionally to hear some tools that will help you through those difficult times. Every marriage has difficult times. Every marriage has difficult times. You are not alone. You're not facing something new that no one's faced. Get help <laughs> before it's too late. Ruslan did not want counseling and I didn't really either because I too much do not like being a failure at things and neither does he. So it was like, we'll figure this out. We'll get through it. And you know, not the whole marriage was like that, but that, you know, it was like some of those patches where it was just like rough. I had to start recognizing my issue. Even though Ruslan had stuff to work on too, I was able to go, okay, Lord, he's not listening. He's not changing. I'm getting more and more bitter and mad at him. You better help me with this or this is leading to bad places. And I know it seems like a small minor thing, but it's not. Like, especially if you are a quality time person like me, that message says, I don't want to spend time with you. I would rather spend time with the computer and my work and doing my thing, you know? 
And like I said, he did not do that all the time. But when it happened, it was so, to such an extreme, you know, two or three in the morning. I'm like, what? Plus, I had my strong beliefs about if that was even okay, because I was pretty religious back then. And so it seemed like such a waste of your life and your time just literally staring at a computer playing a game. So yes, I know I had lots of things. But I hope that's helpful. You can start with you. Even if your spouse is not willing to work on him or her yet, you can take your stuff to God and you can say, help. I'm willing to change. I see that I have issues here. I do want to heal. And when one person starts to change in a relationship, the relationship starts to change no matter what. And that, I wish I would have known that in those early years because I thought if he's not on board, there's no hope we can't fix our marriage. That was a lie. So there's that. Have a beautiful day.